Welcome to Revive Ministry Podcast. Today we continue into 2022. When this episode airs, it'll be February, and the topic this month is building on our connection. A lot of those who are in recovery know that the impact that those closest to us have is immeasurable. And if it's positive, uh, it is something that we, at least from my peers and those who are in the recovery community, there's, no, there's just nothing that even comes close. So I just want to say we have a new guest today. His name is Papa Ray, and we're so excited to have him here. Thank you. Thank you, Papa Ray, to come and share your insight with us today um, on this topic of connecting, building on connection. You know, February is always known for Valentine's Day, but there's all different types of connections that are as important, especially during this time of year of uncertainty. What would you like to sh- uh, thank you for coming on? Oh, thank you for having me. I, um, I just love to share the wisdom yeah. the Holy Spirit has given me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my number one goal in life is to be for the world what the world was not for me when I needed them the most. Yeah. I just remember, um, at least from my experience and those around me, um, helping people became my healing. You know, that whole thing. Um, um, serving others became my recovery. Uh, before we dive right in, I want to share with those who are listening. If you are in crisis, please seek appropriate professional help. In the U.S., there's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's 1-800-273-8255. But I encourage wherever you are, even in the United States, there's all different types of resources out there. I will encourage you to find what they are in your area. I always start with a quote, Ray, because I know that people have said it better than I, and I'm fine with that. You know, I just like to propagate some conversation on this idea of building on our connection. Why is it important? It's from Martha Luther King, which is kind of funny because today is Martha Luther King when we record this. And um, it says, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is an interrelated structure of reality. It's just like, I cannot say I am myself. It doesn't affect anyone else because me, what I do impacts, even if we like it or not, people around us in good ways or in bad ways. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So that reaction, there's an opposite reaction. And that's so, so deep. Yes, uh, it goes more. It goes deeper than the physical. Mm-hmm. It actually goes in. If you want to get into the spiritual aspect of it, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus knew the thoughts of the Pharisees by His Spirit. Yeah. So your thoughts and feelings and actions, or anger, or bitterness, or happiness, or joy, does affect other people. It yeah. really, really does. I think you know. Just you know, a lot of times it's that unseen affect or you know, a lot of times we're like well they did something wrong to me and I'm going to hold on to it and that bitterness unfortunately bleeds over to the next person unfortunately uh, you meet and yeah. Um, yeah. I always say this uh, life is best lived shared we are uh, people who need to connect we are uh, connective being uh, I want to also there's this one my wife has a book it's untranslatable words from all around the world and it's like you can't say this word there's no same word it's from south africa it says umbatu which basically means i find my worth in you and you find your worth in me it can be roughly translated but it's this idea you mentioned spirituality as a christian and one of the things that i always thought was very at least reassuring you know digestible even when i wasn't really into it was Jesus came down to serve, not to be served. There's something very different from our mentality of what success, what strength is, what, you know, all all the things that people tell us are positive things. But I found that, I don't know, healing. The idea that, um, oh, so you're saying there's no cure. There's no, no, a lot of times I feel the hope aspect, how we treat one another plays a huge factor anything you want to share i know i said a lot but anything of what we said so far yeah oh no it um 
we we are we need each other and I, I hear people say they they say I don't need anybody. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's what are they doing? Is they're masking their pain. Mm -hmm. They're they're and I just met a young man today at the, at the rec center mm. that um, he's like, yo, my my I don't know who my father is because mm -hmm. my mom slept around with a lot of men. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in, you know, at seven years old, he went into an adopted family. He's I'm okay. I'm okay. It's mm. okay. I'm like, no, it's not. He goes, yeah. no, no, I'm okay. I'm like, may I be honest? He goes, yeah. I said, no, you're not okay. And so what happens is we, we can't find our way of being okay. So mm -hmm. we tell, our, tell ourselves and everybody else, we are okay. Yeah. So, but then what do we do? It's called, it's a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I said to him, I said, the first thing he, he it was in the, in the sauna and he mm -hmm. goes, you come in here to meditate. And I said, yeah, I do. And I, I could tell, just I could just feel it. He was struggling. Yeah. And I, what are you struggling with? He mm -hmm. said, oh, I got a hangover. I said, why? Well, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I said, what are you hiding from? He said, well, I'm not hiding from anything. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you struggling with? Well, yeah, you know, I get depressed. And he mm -hmm. starts being real about, you know, open yeah. up. And it all comes down to, sure, he has an adopted family, mm -hmm. but he's still not okay. And he's trying to tell me it's okay not to be yeah. okay. Not to yeah. not agree it is. Mm -hmm. When you keep creating a scenario that you don't need help, that yeah. you don't need to find the answer, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up for failure. I think you know, you know it, it's it's very funny. Um, you mentioned it that way. It's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. I, I'm you know. But in the aspect, sometimes in crisis situations, we talked about suicide. Sometimes in those crisis areas, understand that the mistakes you made, it's okay to not be okay. That's different. But what you're, what you're talking about is so it almost mirrors, but it's not the same at all because it makes the person be okay with the complacency and not addressing what's in front of them. So I feel people have to understand, at least from my experience and those who I work with every day at work or people in my life, that there are different coping mechanisms that don't work well in different scenarios. Okay. Yeah. So I use this example. If I broke my arm, um, I don't use the emotional coping skills during because of my because of my broken arm. I go to the doctor to get it casted. Now, sometimes we say, you know, we'll lose someone. You know, a lot of times with this COVID, people lost a lot of people close to them. So you yeah. can't treat it like going to the doctor to fix that scenario. So the person you mentioned, like, hey, I'm okay, I'm okay. No, you're not. You're not okay because the thing is, grief is something that should not be rushed. It's a process that takes time. You have to be able to invest that time and feel valued enough that you can invest that time. One of the biggest things I, I find very interesting is I ask a person, do you have a hobby? What do you mean? And the funny thing, when I dive deeper, they're like, it's almost like they can't have a hobby because they're so busy trying to get somewhere that they're not. But I feel having a hobby is a very healthy thing. Being oh, able yeah. to say that I need, I need time to do something that I like. If you're not able to set boundaries, and I think um, during COVID-19, during this time, it was a good opportunity for people to set boundaries sometimes, but some people didn't. Um, but I'm not, for me, I feel what you said right there really rang true to when you're talking about the idea that, oh, I'm just going to say I'm okay with my scenario. It's, a lot of times they're like, well, you know, it's too much. It's too much now because you're thinking about the whole thing. You're trying to see the whole staircase before just taking the first step. So I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I, I really affirm what you said. Hmm. It's okay if you're in a struggle mm -hmm. and you know the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. It's not okay mm -hmm. to stay there. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, 
I like to tell my clients as a personal transformation coach, and I'm working with a client and helping them uh, work through their battles. I mm -hmm. said, embrace the struggle because you're going up the mountain. Yeah. So if you can't handle the, the battle going up the mountain, mm -hmm. making progress, sometimes slow, sometimes none. But mm -hmm. if you can't handle the battle going up this mountain, you're never going to be able to handle the battle at the top of the mountain. Yeah. So embrace the struggle going up the mountain. Mm -hmm. It's by design. The yeah. struggle going up the mountain is designed to make sure you're capable of holding what the Lord has for you on top of the mountain. So the I struggle is okay. Mm -hmm. But to stay here mm -hmm. and slide back is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> and to tell people, well, this is just where I'm stuck and I'm going to stay here the rest of my life. No, that's not what God designed. Mm -hmm. The battle is designed to make you better, not to not to hurt you and not mm -hmm. to make you worse. Yeah, and I, I, I just feel a lot of times um, we're not static human beings. Thing like It can be encouraging to know that things can change, especially those at their lowest, you know. Um, sometimes when you know we have those sayings that um, is out of our control, it can be out of control, but you may not be able to change it yet. I like to use the word yet at the end of things because yeah. a lot of times <laughs> things may not be able to change yet, but at the same time, you know, let's work on these little things in the meantime. And I feel that, um, when we th when you know, when we're talking about this topic, um, it is highly encouraging i always use this and i hope my audience doesn't get nauseant but i remember victor frankel that that psychologist and his analysis of that situation in the holocaust when he was there and he was seeing that people would give half their bread they would serve other people and a lot of those times those people do a lot better and for me being kind of rational guy understanding like I could see people saying, well, that doesn't make sense. If I was there, I would keep all my bread to survive. But there's something that is not seeable when it comes to hope. And um, I want to share with those who are listening, because a lot of people from all faiths, all walks of life, listen to my, and I, I, I encourage whatever you do, find that hope, you know, as an outreach. Yes. At the same time, I, I love people sharing whatever did does help so i don't proselyze but i encourage you to, to hope and to to find something that is more than just you you know more than just i'm gonna do this so i can get this you know obtaining things in life is fickle i'll tell you that right now becoming something better is something that i feel faith-based communities in, in the in in the scenarios like you're sharing and those who I've, I've talked to, those leaders that I work with, is highly inspiring. Just like the like the verse I said, Jesus came to serve the God, the Son of God, and not to be served. And I feel that humbling experience and those lessons. Like this one old lady once said to me in church, she said, "Told me that people are either blessings or lessons." Very simple, <laughs> and it's very true. You know, a lot of times you go to a couple of board meetings and you kind of learn this real quick, but it's very true that. You know, it's how you look at it. I remember you're saying, oh, you know, it's going to suck, basically. Sometimes this stuff that you're going through will suck in the beginning. But isn't it funny? When we, when you realize that it's going to be hard, it gets easier in your mind because you, you already prepare for it. If you're expecting, if you have entitlement, you're like, I shouldn't have to go through this. This shouldn't happen. Then what happens is you're stuck. You're stuck there because, you know, half the time, I'll tell you, Ray, they may be right. They may be right. They, they shouldn't happen. A lot of these things are horrible things that happen to people. But here we are. And I'm here with you right now. Let's see what we can do to move forward. It's about moving forward. It's not about staying still. My, that's that's uh, glad you brought it up in that way because mindset is so, so critical. Mm -hmm. You feel entitled and you go into a situation and you hit this wall. Mm hmm your, your brain is not going to have the ability to be respond, responding to get you through that wall. Mm -hmm. So all the rewards, when you get to this wall, you consumed all the rewards. Mm -hmm. Your next reward is on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. 
You cannot get anything else on this side. You're yeah. done with everything you get. You mm -hmm. got to get through it. Here's the now when you want to get into just the science, mm -hmm. just the mechanics of emotions. Mm -hmm. Is your brain is doing a research of your whole life every moment of the day mm. to determine what's going to happen in the next moment based on your past beliefs. Mm. So here comes an event. Your brain mm. does the research and says, "Wow, I think this is about to happen based on all my beliefs of my past." And this happens at the speed of light. It mm. searches your whole brain. Mm. This is what is going to happen. And then the next thing it does is really interesting. It checks in with your emotions. How do I feel right now? Am I in a good mood? Am I in a bad mood? Mm -hmm. And do I like this person? I don't. I like them person. Now, what did they do to me the last time? Mm -hmm. This is still all happening at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Checks in with your emotions. If it comes back, I'm not in a good place. I don't think I like what's going to happen. It releases cortisol and adrenaline in your brain. Cortisol and adrenaline. The, the uh, adrenaline makes your heart race faster, your saliva drive up, your organs shut down. Cortisol takes your cognitive thinking, dramatically drops it to mm -hmm. I am going to fight or flight, and that's it. Yeah, I'm going to be safe. Mm -hmm. Now, here comes the event. You perceive it's not going to be good. Cortisol takes your cognitive thinking. You respond with a le much lesser creative ability to think clearly. Yeah, and then you respond in yeah. a way to stay safe. Yeah, and it's not appropriate. Yeah, you're just trying to be safe. It's yeah, so critical that we slow this process down long before we get to the situation.、Mm -hmm. We got to become self-aware.、Mm -hmm. I, I like what you said about connections. Connections are so so. <laughs> Now, who you? You will be in five years from now. The books you read and the people you meet, yeah, because the books you're reading and the people you meet are feeding your mind.、Mm -hmm. That when your brain does the research for you to respond in、mm -hmm. that nanosecond, where's it getting its information? Yeah, the books you read and the people you meet.、Mm -hmm. You're going to start reacting like the people you're around. Yeah, and the more. Positive people you are around. Now I know.、Um, I struggled a lot. I spent fifty years of my sixty. I spent fifty out of my sixty years anger, bitterness, pray, rage, and depression.、Mm -hmm. I went through two major depressions.、Mm -hmm. uh, seven years ago, I was five minutes away from suicide.、Mm -hmm. I was done, and I get it. It、mm -hmm. is hard to, to upgrade your circle of influence. Not impossible. Yeah. Is you just simply need to step into it, and not every new person you meet that you start connecting with is going to be the right connection. It's、yeah. all about upgrading. Just once, one will, one won't. So what? Who's next?、Yeah. Don't get hung up on that person. Didn't doesn't talk to me anymore. Oh my gosh! Never get attached to, to a person.、Mm -hmm. You'll find as you grow and progress in life that this person will come into your life for a moment. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit will just all of a sudden they'll disappear. It's like ah. Yeah. What happened? Because they can't take you any farther.、Mm -hmm. They took you as far as they can.、Mm -hmm. I used to get really wigged out when all of a sudden somebody was missing in my life. And they、yeah. weren't there anymore. I'm like,、oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I say? Why ain't、mm -hmm. he there? Well, Holy Spirit's like, Ray, they can't give you anything else. You need to go out and look for the next person.、Mm -hmm. Take you to the next step, but don't hold on to them.、Mm -hmm. They're not your lifeline. They're just your next step. Yeah, and I really like.、Um... The idea of, I kind of say, defining the relationship of whoever it is, your friend, understanding that there are limits of what that will be, and be okay with it because a lot of times life happens so quickly, and even it's humbling, even being a leader in the church, that I may touch a person's life, 
just for a moment yes. and that's it yep. it's i am not superman i'm not gonna save the day i am just maybe the person who gives the guy a ride maybe the guy who smiles at him and asks him how his day was maybe prays with him in the context of faith based or maybe just follows up um life that. keeps moving on very quickly and um, I, love, I love your analogy. Yeah. I'm the guy giving him a ride. So <laughs> yeah. Look at relationships like they're got, they get in my car and I drive them for a mile or a thousand miles. Mm. Or I get in their car and they drive me for a mile or a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. The thing that the critical key is don't build your hope on any one person. Mm. Your hope has to be on Christ alone. Mm -hmm. But in this journey, as we're walking and riding together, don't get connected to that one person that if that one person's not there anymore, you fall apart. So if yeah. you fall down because somebody moved, that means you were leaning on them too hard. Yeah, I think um, especially, you know, you know I was a, oh, I'm, well, as an elder and all that stuff in church, uh, working with the pastors, you know, one of the biggest fears, especially with youth, is you don't want them to not come just because you're not there. <laughs> you know, you don't want them because they get so comfortable with you. And that's kind of like the, it, it's one guy once told me, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a father, I have a wife, but I don't have kids. But he said, there's always a struggle as parenting of the shoelace dilemma. I <laughs> call it. The shoelace dilemma is there's this time when they're learning to get their shoelace tied. Do you do it for them or do you let them do it? Because you let them do it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> or do you do it for them? And it's it, it's not to be how you say, um, it's not to um, bode fun of the situation. But a lot of times in life, we kind of, we get urgent. Even the ones trying to help sometimes overstep or the ones receiving the help may expect or in, feel like they need to be helped this way or they can't get out um the uncomfortable is the growth sometimes that pain is the healing in a weird way when it comes to these kind of difficult scenarios um of um recovery and you know when you're dealing with people it's very critical because sometimes you get them out of rehab okay you go they go to rehab they do well they do well in rehab. They do well. They get off. But then sometimes, unfortunately, and, you know, Valentine's Day is in February. They say, well, I need someone. I need someone. Oh, you do need someone. Okay. And they go about it from, like you said in the sign, they go about from what they last remember how they got someone. And then a lot of times, unfortunately, they get themselves in trouble because it's kind of the same avenue that brought them to trouble. The thing is, I feel as you build yourself, you don't look at connections as a be all end all, just like anything else. There's it's a kind of growing experience. I am the, I have friends today that I may talk to once a year. <laughs> you know, you get to that thing, and it's not because I don't care about them. It's just my life is very different than what there is. I still respect them. I still love them. But, you know, if you're going to be hung up on that, I feel you have to ask your, the question, why? And you have to be really honest with yourself. Oh, because... that's, that's everything. <laughs> why, 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 why is the most critical question you can ask yourself is why am I thinking that? Yeah. So I tell my clients, it's a simple five steps to every struggle you're facing. Is number one, you have to stop. Mm -hmm. because you have 40 thoughts a minute, about 70,000 thoughts a day. Dr. Joe Dispenza says about 50% of what you're thinking today is what you've been struggling with yesterday. So if you ever get stuck in the mud or the snow in your car, what's the first thing you do? You step on the gas. Yeah. And if that don't work, you put it in reverse and step on the gas. Well, we yeah. do that mentally, emotionally. Mm. If we get stuck in what we're thinking or what we're trying to do, and we try to outthink what we're thinking. Yeah. So I have a simple five steps to stop. And, and, he, and write this down. This is the, really the, the way to get the most out of this. You write down, what am I thinking? Mm -hmm. Why am I thinking that? Mm -hmm. Is it true? What's the truth? Mm -hmm. Stop 
what am I thinking? Mm-hmm. Why am I thinking that? Is it true? What's the truth? Yeah. Now, when you write down, what am I thinking? You write. You ask yourself, well, why am I thinking that? Write it down. Whatever comes to your mind, write mm-hmm. it down. Simple question. Why am I thinking that? Whatever mm-hmm. you say, write it down. Why am I thinking that? Mm-hmm. Every time, write about five times going down through. What am I thinking? Why? 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 When you get down, you're going to get to the core. Of, oh, mm-hmm. that's why I'm thinking that. Yeah. Here's the problem: if you never challenge your brain to say, "Why am I thinking that?" Mm-hmm. We're going to find the devil, and he's going to laugh the whole way to the bank. Mm-hmm. He loves to be blamed for everything. He don't care. He mm-hmm. gladly wants you to blame him. Mm-hmm. It's a wrong belief that you're yeah. carrying in your own heart. When you know the truth, the truth mm-hmm. will set you free. Yeah. If you're not free,、mm-hmm. that means you don't have the truth. Yeah. Where's the lie? Yeah. Now here's the key: if you never take the time to say why, 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 why,、mm-hmm. ever find the truth. Yeah. The the question why I feel can X has at least personally helped me move forward a lot more in a lot of a lot of aspects. I just think about、um, this one book I read, The Lies We Believe. You know, it's from、uh, and one of the things he says, the author does a really great job of making it digestible. But one thing, he's a psychologist. He sees this woman. I remember reading it, and she's like, "Well." No,、um, I'm so upset. He's just telling the scenario of his his session. It's like my sister. She calls me and wastes all my time. She should know not to waste my own time.、And、the guy's like, well, did you ask her <laughs> that? You, what did you tell her in the beginning that you know I don't have much time? Well, she should know that you know <laughs> you understand. It's kind of funny because and then the the guy's like, well, I feel the problem is not your sister. It's you. And that's where it gets kind of you know that's where the why question you know why do I do this why you know I had to ask a question with the podcast when I first did it I remember when I was doing events here and I was nervous to do a podcast and I'm like why do I do this well I love connecting why do I love connecting well because connections were one of the vital steps me move forward in my recovery and. Connecting with others allow inspires me, and I like helping others because it does make me remind myself what worked, and also that also helps other people, and I like that feeling. Well, wh- why this podcast? Why do you do it? Why do you do it every week? That、uh, every、um, well, you know, because I look back, at, you know, a lot of people, you know, get discouraged whether it's in church or whether whatever facet. To share their thoughts on these sensitive topics, so I wanted to create a safe place that you know people can talk and share their thoughts about things that normally are pushed aside because it's too messy, <laughs> you know. And、uh, for me, and that was enough for me. And I kept asking the question. What I'm trying to tell those who are listening is, I went through that process. Why? And that's where I'm here right now. 172 episodes <laughs> and counting、uh, in my、wow. podcast. Because it's not about oh what the person on the left or the right of the pew is doing. I did a sermon one time. Can we go on a mission trip without a camera? And I'm like, <laughs> and I, um, <laughs> some people were a little bit shaken, but <laughs> but、uh, talking to, about what you were, you were talking about, there's this Welsh word hereth, and I think a lot of us are. Accustomed to this because we forget what the past. We forget how high school was. We think it was amazing or whatever. We nostalgize. It says this homesickness of for somewhere you cannot return to, the nostalgia and the grief, the lost place of your past, place that never were. A lot of times we have these expectations. We get told what to do, what we feel we should feel. Feelings are good indicators, not good masters. I've been told this a lot of times, so I really appreciate you going through those steps. I want to ask you one of the last two things. I want to ask you is, what have you learned in building on your connections? I know it was only like ten, 
years, seven years since you know you were struggling for long, most of your life. Uh, if you want to share a little bit of that and what have you learned and you shared a lot already, but anything you want to add or reemphasize. So the, the most critical part about making the connections is don't need them. If mm. you need somebody, they're mm. going to pull away. They're going to be like, whoa, they're going to feel you being clingy. Yeah. And, and nobody wants a clingy person. Mm. is connect with the person because it's a good thing not because you desperately need them now i know people are going to say oh my gosh but i need connections mm. yes you do the reason that people become over clinging is they're trying to uh have that connection to build themselves up mm. you have to build yourself on yourself mm. not on somebody else if you're trying to build your worth on being connected with somebody you're going to fail yeah if you need somebody to be good you already failed yeah because that other person cannot make you feel good yeah you have to be okay within yourself yeah and i like to say if you're not okay naked and alone Whatever you need is your downfall. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need beyond that is going to be the thing that's going to make you stumble. Yeah, and I feel you know, um, you know, when it comes to connections, when it comes to you know um, what you were talking about what do we need beyond that when you ask the question why why do i do this i feel this is a very sobering reality of it all that the fact is um there's a lot of fear that we're gonna let some we're gonna lose someone if we're not needing them and that's a lie okay? 100 lie 100%. the thing is we are people that have a whole world <laughs> that like that we're dealing with and it's not um i feel the fear when fear is the first thing that steps into a relationship it's already like you said doomed to fail because i'm afraid let's say a scenario i'm afraid of losing your friendship right i'm gonna start proceeding our friendship to through that kind of scale which is gonna amount to some negative or some toxic behavior yes. to hope that I don't lose something that I probably already lost. And it gets awkward. <laughs> it's very, very awkward. It's very awkward because, you know, at the same time, you know, we people generally want to help each other in different, but there's it, times have changed and, but people have it in some ways, in some aspects. We so do. Really glad you brought it up that way. Yeah. So what it what happens? Mm -hmm. if you're afraid of losing my friendship. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to uncomfortable, awkward ways to try and salvage the relationship. Yeah. And it's going to consume your mind of mm -hmm. what you do, and it, it's going to cost you unbelievably emotionally, mental energy. Yeah. I'm going to feel it yeah. and I'm going to be repulsed by it. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, whoa, this is really <laughs> weird. This yeah. is like, ah, I don't really like this. And it's going to make me backpedal all the faster. Mm -hmm. Not every, not every relationship mm -hmm. is meant to continue. Mm -hmm. It's so important that mm -hmm. you guys realize that some people can only take you to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And it's time to get to the next person. Start looking for that next person. Mm -hmm. Don't be clinging to one, because that person can only take you so far up the mountain. Mm -hmm. the next person's going to take you a little farther. The yeah. next person a little farther. Now, some people will take you farther than other people. Mm -hmm. Some people are for a very very short season. Yeah. Some people are for a long season. Yeah. It took. It would always take me sideways when I would lose that mentor or that relationship. Yeah. So I realized, wait a minute, 
I can't hold on because if I'm holding on to this old mentor, old relationship, mm -hmm. and, and they're walking away because that was their time to go, mm. guess where I am? I'm mm. stuck. Yeah. I'm I'm at boom. I'm stuck. Yeah. I'm not growing. Yeah. And and it's not hurting them. Yeah. They're all doing whatever God called them to do. Yeah. Now I have to get up, mm -hmm. be aware, self-aware, mm -hmm. and emotionally aware, and start looking, okay, listening, looking to find that next, that next mentor, that next thing. It could be a book. It could mm -hmm. be a podcast. It could be for a while I really followed Lewis Howell. Mm -hmm. And because uh, he has a lot of uh experts on about brain, mm -hmm. about how the brain works, and I love that stuff. Mm. I would just be consumed with that. There for a while, I was consumed with Benny Hinn, mm. and, uh, Lance Wall. Now, I'd have a uh, CDs in my tr in my truck, and mm. in my truck, I'd play them over and over mm. and over and over. They were my mentors. Mm. I never met Benny Hinn, but I would listen mm. to his things like literally, repeatedly, nonstop. Mm -hmm. And it it was my mentor for a time. Yeah. So. The, the, the number one thing I want to, I really want to get across is don't get stuck on any one person having to be your lifelong mentor. I really appreciate, you know, in the beginning I said, I asked my peers or my clients or whatever, do you have a hobby? And sometimes they say, they say their hobby, but it has, they say, well, it's with someone. And then I said, no, 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 no. Do you have a hobby that you could do on your own and enjoy by yourself? And um, I feel it's very important because it does help you kind of um, build who you are. Um, uh, reflecting is huge. And I think in a relationship, I, I like this where we said it before, Mbatu. I find my worth in you and you find your worth in me. But I feel the, the tone and the verbiage, at least from what I hear, it's it's not static. It's not like we're going to be stuck in a, in a, in this time freeze that we're always going to be the same. No, it's just, I value you, your worth, And I, you know, you'll have old friends. You may be lost connection with or friends or family members. You don't really connect with, but you can still love them. You can still care for them. You can still have, a, it's just, your life is still moving. It's uh, life is, Life is dead when it's static. When you're when you're staying put, it, it, it's, it's because then you're just trying to maintain. And in relationships, it's something that grows and doesn't do well when you try to keep it the same. You know, growth doesn't stay the same. So I want to thank you, Ray, for being willing to share with us today. It was it was a wonderful conversation. We just went kind of everywhere. Yes, I enjoy it. I hope your listeners are blessed by this. I hope they'll never be the same because they listen to them. <laughs> yes. And uh, I just wanted to tell those who are listening um, and watching, um, there's various platforms you can watch, um, listen and watch. Um, but uh, ReviveMinistriesFL.com is our website. This is goodbye from Revive Ministry Podcast. I want to leave you this quote. It's a little longer. It's from Maxwell, but uh, I'll read each part. It says, think back to the most important experience in your life. The highest of highs, the greatest victories, the most daunting obstacles overcome. How many happen to you alone? I bet there are very few. When you understand that being connected to others is one of life's greatest joys, you realize that life best comes when you initiate and invest in solid relationships. And that's not brought up from fear it is brought up with respect and part of that respect and love starts and has to start with yourself that means building boundaries saying i'm gonna take a day for me i'm gonna try to be better oh i fell oh i messed up i'm gonna try to see why that happened and i try to be better i know it's easier said than done and i, I do want to share with those who are struggling find resources and if you're feeling in crisis it is okay to not be okay there's ne never find a permanent solution to a temporary problem. For us, I just want to say thank you, Ray, for, uh, Papa Ray, for sharing your insight. And as always, thanks for watching.